Hi, everybody. Welcome to Rachel's Super Cute Creations. Um, I'm just going to adjust this lighting. I'm sorry. We're having my computer's picking up this light. Um, I am doing a little bit of late night crafting. Um, and I'm going to make some little just really simple, easy journals um, to put in my antique booth. So hope everybody's having a great night. And if you've jumped on, please say hello. Um, since I was going to be up anyway, I decided to just go ahead and turn the camera on. So hopefully some people will jump in and join me. Um, so what I did is I just grabbed a bunch. I have so much scrap paper um cardstock and it's just single sided um and i need to use it up i don't know about you guys but i just seem to have so many um so much paper that i just keep hoarding and so i decided to just get it out today and we're going to do some simple simple little projects so all i'm doing is just cutting this paper this is 12 by 12 paper um, and this is just one of those hot buy packs from um, Michael's. Nothing special, just a hot buy pack. And I'm just cutting it at eight and a half inches wide. And so it's eight and a half by 12. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm turning it. And you do want to make sure this part, this paper does not have a direction, so it's not a big deal. But I'm just turning it, and I'm cutting it at six inches wide. And if you're watching the replay, um, you know, please leave a comment, a thumbs up. That would be great. And so these are going to be eight and a half by six inches wide. If you have eight and a half by 11 paper, you can do this as well. But all I'm doing is cutting these up and we're just going to keep these little strips in, and we're going to kind of wing it. I don't really have a plan. Um, this one kind of has a pattern. So if I cut it, the strip off and I turn it and I cut it this way and we fold it, it'll be fine. Okay. So. Because remember, we're going to fold our covers like this. So if I was to cut the strip off of this side and fold it, this would still kind of work, but the, the stems would be going the wrong way. So welcome, welcome, everybody. If you're here, say hello. So that I can um, say hello back to you. And I don't feel like I'm just sitting here in my office talking to myself while my family is sleeping. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> So everybody had a great Sunday. Once again, we're making it eight and a half wide by 12 inches tall. And I'm just going to cut this to six inches. Now, these would be super fun. Um, I'm already starting to think about Christmas. And I know it's only June. And you guys are screaming at me on the other end saying, Rachel, it's only June. Why are you thinking about Christmas? Well, I'd love to make something handmade for not only uh, family, but for friends. Um, a lot of you are my pen pals. And so I'd love to send something just a little fun in the mail when it gets closer to Christmas. And, um, you know, during the school year, it's harder for me to do this type of crafting. So um, darn it, there's a fly in my house driving me nuts right now. Okay. So And so I have all of these papers to play with. And then I just plain old lined paper. Um, I've had it for a while. And what I'm going to do is we're going to fold it as if I was teaching back in my days, hot dog style. So we're going to fold it because it's eight and a half by 11. So we're going to fold it the long ways. And then I'm just going to cut it at six inches. And I'm not going to use the thick, the, the top part of it for right now um we'll use that for another another day but i'm just going to cut some of this because i love to have lined paper in all of my journals i just think there's something about lined paper um, and you can stamp on it and we might even pull some stamps out to do that so if you're here please say hello i'd love to um to chit chat with you 
All right, and so we're just cutting, cutting, cutting. Um, I'm gonna grab my phone here and post this. So we just have some piles that not be necessarily signatures. Um, it's going to be some, some pieces that we're going to play with. And these strips, I'm not sure what we're going to do with them yet, but we're going to do something with them um, because we're going to use up all those 12 by 12 sheets. So let me go ahead and set my paper cutter to the side. And I started with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we started with eight sheets of um, scrapbook paper. And this is just one of those $5 hot pad, hot buy pads from um, the dollar, I'm sorry, from Michael's. So that's all I'm using. And I also have this that I've had for a really long time. Um, this is the copy weight paper. And we might be able to find some colors that might go along with this. So I'm just going to flip through it real quickly. I think they're brighter than what I'm actually dealing with. And I apologize if you can hear my daughter coughing. Um, poor thing has been sick. We've had her to ER twice, um, thinking she had COVID. She does not have COVID. This has this horrible, horrible cough. Um, and they were telling us that there's like new strains of colds and things coming out. So I don't think this is going to work. We're going to go ahead and set that to the side. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out which ones are going to be my cover. And so this one had flowers on one side and then it didn't, it was sort of on ombre. And I know it's probably hard to see with my bright light, but um, so I definitely want that to be a cover. And there should be another side to that paper. So we're going to have two that just look like that. If I can find it. Yeah, so we have this one as well. So all I'm going to do is just fold this over. And you could use your, if you have a scoreboard, you could use a scoreboard. But I'm just going to go ahead and use my bone folder. So we have two covers right here. And let's see, what else should we use for a cover? Let's do something a little bit different. Um, Let's do this plain one. Um, it's sort of a lavender color because we could always dress up the front of it. And I'm thinking sort of cottage core. That's kind of what I'm. my thoughts are. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the cottage core design, but it's becoming very popular. Um, and it's all about florals and um, things that you might put in your cottage. So that's kind of my thought, even though not all of these papers look like that. Let's, let's go ahead and use this one too. All right, so we have four little journals out of this stack of pages. Um, shoot, let's, let's do six. Let's do six little journals. I think we can do six out of this. And if I need to grab more paper, I will. So. All right. Um, and let's just do this cute little pink polka dot. All right. So that'll give us six little sweet journals. All right, so these will be our covers right here. And then that's gonna leave us with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. So it's going to leave us with 10 sheets. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one more out so I can have two sheets of scrapbook paper in each one. And then we'll have some lined paper and I think we'll grab some book pages and things like that. Um, so let's just grab a couple more pages. So what is everybody up to today? Those of you who are in here are super quiet. <laughs> super quiet. So what's everybody up to? I'd love to know. Um, let's do this one. Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> I see some more of you are popping in. So you must have seen this. I know I haven't done a video on my channel in a while. I have been super busy um, and I'm actually on vacation for the next couple of weeks. So hopefully you'll see me on my channel a little bit more. Um, I'm also, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll try to get a, a sale on too as well. Hi, Penny. How are you? Oh, I'm so happy. So Penny's working on envelopes and she's just... Um, craft along with me. Well, thanks, Penny. I am kind of doing a late night craft myself. I unfortunately had to lay down. I had a headache and and then when I lay down um, during the day, then I can't sleep at night. So I know better than to do that, but there's not much I can do when I have a headache. So family is, is pretty much in bed and I decided to come in and just make some super cute, quick little journals to go in my um, antique shop. So I have two shops, just so you guys know, I haven't really updated everybody. I have two little shops. Um, one, we have an antique, we go, we're in an antique store, um, and that's called the Sanford Antique Mall. And that has more of our antiques that we've been collecting for a while now. But I just recently opened up a booth in a place called an antique an antique boutique. And um, if you have Facebook, you can Google that. It's in Sanford, Michigan, um, which is not too far from my house, but they do a little bit of everything. They kind of have crafty stuff and handmade stuff and antiques and vintage. And it's way more of the vintage stuff. And you guys know I love the vintage stuff. That's what I sell a lot of. I find those, I source all of that stuff for you guys and bring it to you. But now I can source locally. I was having people um, come to my house, but with COVID, we um, kind of stopped that for the last 18 months. And now this is a way to source to my customers locally and not have to have them come to my house. Um, we, we just decided after COVID that uh, we're not comfortable having customers come to our house all the time. Plus we have two little barky dogs and, and so, um, we decided to go ahead and and try these two booths. So we're super excited about that. Um, we're still doing the online sales, which is fun. Love it. Um, and we're just having a great time. That's kind of our, my husband and I have a few more years until we retire. And we're just kind of trying to find out what we're going to do. Um, my daughter's a senior this year. So she's... Um, going to be going off to college and we decided we better figure something out before we get empty nest syndrome. So, so anyway, Penny, you're making some envelopes. What are you making envelopes out of? And anybody else who is here, um, please say hello. So once again, I don't feel like I'm just talking to the wall here. <laughs> I know it's kind of late at night, but um, I'd love to just chit chat a little bit and just make make some little mini journals with you. So all I'm doing, you guys, is I'm just folding these in half so that I can have all of my pieces sourced together. Um, when, I, when I make things, I like to make things in assembly line fashion. Um, and if you've watched some of my earlier videos, um, when I first started my channel, I did 30 journals in 30 days. And people were like, how in the heck did you do 30 journals in 30 days? Well, because I, because I do things in batches. So, you know, I, 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 I have identified, oh my goodness, I cannot talk. I've identified my cover. So we know we're going to make six journals right here. Um, and so 
these are my covers. I've kind of set those to the side. Here's some of my pages that are going to go inside. They're the same size as my cover. So we're going to have to do a little bit um, of trimming, but I'm okay with that. And then, of course, you know, we went ahead and here's, here's all of my lined paper. Oh, thanks, Penny. That paper is older. It's, it was just one of those $5 spots from Michael's. Okay, so Penny's doing double envelopes to stuff. Did not have enough, did not have quite enough for my paper kits. Oh, okay, cool. So she's just up making some things. She just got done. I had the pleasure of selling with Penny this weekend. It was so fun, you guys. We do um, the CCC market the third weekend of every month. Um, we were a little off this month because of Father's Day, um, but we, <coughs> excuse me, we do a market with three to four sellers every month um, on Saturday and Sunday, and we just have a great time. We just, it's all about fellowship and fun and just bringing you guys some fun stuff. So, you know, please, if you haven't had a chance to um, go to Sacred Mementos, which is um, the Facebook page that we work with, um, please take an opportunity to do that because there is some really fun sales and the ladies are so helpful in there. Okay, excuse me for a minute. I'm going to have to make some noise because I'm going to grab some more paper. Yeah, it was super fun, wasn't it, Penny? It was super fun. Well, that was nice and noisy. I was trying to be quiet. So one of the things about me is that no matter how quiet I try to be, I'm so loud. And my family is always like, how can you're so loud? I don't know. I try to be super quiet. <laughs> okay. So, oh, my poor daughter. Her room's on the other side. She's probably like, Mom, are you kidding me? Okay. I have these... <coughs> excuse me pages so sorry to cough in your ears um these are just book pages that I've had for a while and I think they're a little bit smaller they're a little bit smaller than my paper but I think oh what if I do it like this but then it won't be going the right way no I think that's okay I think it's good enough See, here I am talking to myself. Um, let me think about this for a minute. Let me think, let me think. How do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? I don't mind these numbers going this way using this paper. So I'm going to go ahead and fold these. Now, when you're using book pages, especially if you're going to give your journal away or you're going to... Um, sell your journal. Be very careful about what is on your book pages. Um, you just wouldn't want something that's inappropriate. Um, so I just kind of will always take a little scan. I know these are fine because um, they're just city and counties and they're, they're coordinates. So I know there's nothing on here that's going to be a problem. So I'm just going ahead and I'm folding these. And we'll, we'll make sure that they're adjusted to the right size. So I just folded those in half. And then these are from an old, I don't know. Um, looks like something from like a motor book or something. This looks like some math problems. Who do we have that knows the math problems, Penny? We need them to, to do this because I certainly can't do this math. So I'm just going to fold these in half. And we're just going to get rid of some of these. And then this is from an aircraft layout book. And I know it doesn't exactly go with what we're doing, but it's fine. I just want some book pages that I know are going to be okay. And the goal of with this project is to use up scraps, use up things that are in your 
stash, I'm just grabbing things. Just in hoard different supplies, but it's time. Oh, Penny has a granddaughter that's a junior high math teacher. Good for her. I was an English and creative writing teacher when I taught. Now I'm a principal, but math was not my thing. And my, my daughter and my husband always laugh at me. I taught business math and I could do that. But that algebra and, and calculus and all that stuff. Yeah, that's, that's not for me. Not for me. And I haven't done anything with it for so long that that's the other problem. <laughs> oh, everybody's quiet. We have some people in here, but they're just being super quiet. Please say hello if you're in here. I'd love to at least say hello back to you. All right. So I've gone ahead and we just have these book pages and we just sourced some book pages. Um... And if I have at least 12, I'm good. So I'm just going to double check. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. Um, this is kind of like a newspaper. Eh, I'm not going to use this one. I don't, I don't like the feeling of this for this type of journal. Um, and then I'm going to grab some. Let's see what else I have. I'm going to grab some. Music pages, I think. We're definitely going to use my other favorite thing to use in junk journals is vintage graph paper. So we're going to use some of that. And I'll grab some music pages and then we will get started putting these together. Okay. Apologize, I wasn't exactly ready because, like I said, this is sort of a spur of the moment thing. Okay, so I have these really cool organ arrangement. Um, they're like folios, and so I love to use them. And I think they're going to be pretty darn. Yeah, that's what I thought. So the cool thing about these is that I can fold them this way so that the music's going the right way. And I'm not going to use the front covers of them. I don't think. I don't think. Let me see here. Yeah, I should be able to get two per awesome. So I just need six of these. And apologize for the noise. My, <laughs> my daughter is as quiet as I am at night. My husband's probably like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to go to sleep. I have to work tomorrow. And these two are being super loud. Yep, that would be us. Okay, because I ripped that, I'm going to just kind of line it up right here. And I'm going to cut... I'll cut that excess off, and this one will be a little bit narrower, but I'm okay with that. So I am just, and the cool thing about these are they're double-sided, so it has the music work on the back. So that's fun journaling page. Fun, fun, fun. Does anybody have any fun summer plans? that they're getting ready to do. The other thing about music is just also kind of take a quick scan for music. Um, if I'm going to sell a journal and it has anything religious in it, I will typically put that in the listing just because depending on who you're selling it to, um, they may not want religious items in there. These are not religious, so it's fine. Um, but just another quick reminder, if you're 
if you are selling your journals, just remember if you've used anything religious from a hymnal book or um, I don't typically use Bible pages in mine. I just have a really hard time putting Bible pages in my journal. People use it all the time and they look super cool, but two, four, five. But I just am not comfortable with tearing up a Bible, even if a Bible is already um, is already tore up. I just it's just my personal preference, and I have no issue with other people that do it. They do beautiful things with them, but okay. So two, four, six. All right. So I have six of these and when we cut it in half, we'll have 12. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Take this out of the way. And we are almost there, you guys. All right. So Penny's making some double stuffed envelopes. Penny, can you... um? If you don't mind, if you would tell people in the chat what a double stuffed envelope is, because I have some new subscribers to the channel, and if they're watching this on replay, they might be wondering what it is that you are making. So if you wouldn't mind sharing just a brief description, and Penny, you guys, also does live videos. Is it Tuesday, Penny, that you do live videos on your channel? Um, Penny, if you want, go ahead and put your channel in here so people can head over. Um, and anybody else who's on here tonight, if you have a channel um, and you do crafty things, um, then please feel free to pop that in the chat. So if someone's watching the replay, they can go ahead and um, and check out your channels. I'm all about sharing. Um, I think it's important, especially as artists, um, that we share each other. Everybody has great ideas. And even if we're all making the same thing, everybody does a little bit different, takes a little different spin on it. And that's what I think is so wonderful about the art that we do. Um, and I know sometimes I call it crafting, but really we're artists. And we're artists with paper, we're artists with with the materials that we're using. And I love that we're upcycling things. Okay, so Penny does it on Thursdays at 7.30 a.m. Mountain Channel Time. And she's going to pop her channel in the bottom. Um, her channel is Penny Pudge. So please check Penny out. Um, and if you're watching the replay, you guys, please go over and subscribe to her channel. Um, she does amazing things. She's a very sweet lady who does amazing things. And so I really recommend her channel. And I hope that you'll have an opportunity to check her out. And even if you can't watch her live, if you can watch her on the replay, um, you know, just remember a thumbs up is important to everybody. So even if you don't like us, or you don't like what we're doing, a thumbs down helps us too. So um if you wouldn't mind giving us a thumbs up when you're in our channels, that helps um, it helps us reach more people. And that's what this is about. This is about sharing. Um, this is about reaching more people and just having a good time. You know, I'm here. I know some of you are probably like, oh my gosh, she's just folding paper and cutting paper. Would she just hurry up and get to things? <laughs> well, you know, this is a process. And today is a craft with me. And if you're watching me on the replay, I'm hoping that you're just playing me in the background and you are playing with the supplies you have in your possession. We don't have to have fancy supplies to make beautiful things. Um, and we can use just about anything. If you don't have all of these papers and these fun things, get your junk mail out, you guys. Pull out magazines. You can make beautiful. When I first started making junk journals, I used to make them out of magazine pages and and things like that. And and I often forget, you know, sometimes it's fun to go back to the basics and do some of that. So think about that. Look at your packaging. Look at the things you have around you and just use them because that is what this is about. This is about using what you have in your possession to make fun and beautiful things. All right. I am probably cutting too many here on this little dinky paper cutter. I'm also good for that. So 
do what I say and not what I, oh, look, it did cut them off. Perfect. All right. And we'll go ahead and we'll cut these cuties. Um, we want these to be, okay, so they're about four and a quarter wide, and I'm going to cut them at four and an eighth wide, just so I know that I'm not, I don't like my pages to stick out beyond my cover. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. Okay, so Penny is saying she tea and coffee stains legal size envelopes and connects them together by gluing one flap inside the other envelope. So she has two pockets and then she stuffs them full of goodies and ephemera. How cool. And Penny, you sell those, right? So she sells those on our, um, when we do our sales and those are super fun. Nothing is better than getting some mail with a bunch of fun stuff. <coughs> Excuse me from someone else's um i always love to get items from that other people have put together and curated because each of us curates in a different way and i know a lot of people love my inspiration kits um, but i love the thought process behind the kits that um, people make because they um everybody has a little bit different take and as i said we are all artists and we all have different ways that we express ourselves through art and so um you know check out penny check out her items that she has for sale um and like i said if you're in here and you have a channel um please share your channel oh you're so sweet penny <laughs> <laughs> Penny says, I sell wonderful items too. Well, I just try to curate fun things for all of you. It makes me happy to curate. Um, I was telling, someone asked me the other day, how do you come up with your inspiration kits? And I told them I was a English teacher and a creative writing teacher for, um, oh my goodness, 10 years. And then, um, and then I moved to central office. I went to the other side from teaching to administration. And um, it's my way of being creative still. Um, I miss teaching. I miss, I teach in a different way. I teach adults now and I love that. Um, but any opportunity I have in my school to teach kids, I do. Um, and I, cause I love their creative creativity. The thing about kids and, and even I, I teach the big ones <laughs> and I have the big ones in my school, but the thing about them is they're just so open. Um, and they're often, you know, people will say, Oh, you know, kids nowadays are so judgmental. They're not. Kids are so hi, Beth. Welcome. Um, they're not judgmental and I just love that they keep an open mind for the most part. Now they're teenagers and believe me, they know everything a lot of the time. Um, but when you're teaching them, their creativity is so amazing and it's just inspiring to me. So a lot of times um, when I'm curating kids, of course, I'm, I'm doing some of that creative writing within my kids. When I find antiques and I find pieces, then I create a story in my head and then I curate items um, for all of you in those kits. And um, I just love them. And, and I've had a lot of my customers will say, you know what, I just, I can't even get into the kit that you made. I just keep it on my desk for inspiration. And I just love that. But the other thing is, is I love to listen to the kids when they write and I come with ideas from them as well. So they'll have these stories. <laughs> so um, Ben, or ben, goodness, Beth is here from um, Rejuvi, Reju oh my goodness, I cannot talk. <laughs> rejuvenating ephemera and she also sells Beth has some amazing things so if you have not Beth if you have a moment pop your channel in here um we're just kind of sharing and, and just chit-chatting and I'm getting ready to make just some quick quick journals we're gonna make six quick journals here in batch format 
Um, I've been on for 35 minutes. So you guys, um, most of the paper I cut while we were here and I've done a lot of talking. So if I was doing this, um, if I was doing this without so much gabbing, I could do it a little faster. So now what I do when I'm batch making journals is I'll take my covers and I'll set them up to the top. And then I just start curating the insides. And I think about, okay, what do I want? How do I want to do this? And I just start putting the papers together. Um, and just going to, and see this one. Oh, did I not cut those? See, there I go, you guys. I was chit-chatting and I didn't cut these to make them the right size. Well, that's okay. We'll trim them when we're done. We'll trim them over down. Oh, you're welcome, Beth. We're all about sharing. All about sharing. So I'm just going to go ahead and just stuff these cutie patooties. And we're going to just, have, I just want to just be have some fun. And we're not going to be worried about what it looks like. Um, if there's too much of one thing in there, we're just going to kind of stuff. All right. And I'm going to leave my center page right here. All right. So let's see what I have here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. We have 11 and I am, so we're going to just set the signature to the side. So we'll do a little more chit chatting while we're at it here. Thanks, Beth. So Beth has a really cool YouTube channel. Um, she sells, she, she does little crafty things as well. So check her out. And I'm not sure who else, like I said, whoever's in here, um, I'm more than welcome to pop in your information. So Beth sold today, as I was telling you all, um, the girls sold today. I sold, Penny and I sold yesterday and Beth sold today with some different ladies. Um, they just had some really cool stuff. A lot of our ladies um, focus on vintage items and bringing our customers just a variety of fun. And so um, it's kind of what they were up to. I'm trying to make sure I have different book pages in each one here. And then I talk and I can't remember how many is in here. Six, eight, nine, ten. So are you exhausted, Beth? I know when I do those sales, I just, oh my gosh, I get so exhausted. It's so fun, but it's exhausting because you spend days and days getting things together and then you are talking almost the entire time. All right, so we'll set that one to the side. I can't believe it. Everybody must be sleeping. <laughs> I, I know it's a little bit late. Um, normally I do, I, for a while there, I really tried to do every Sunday. Um, I would do a craft with me um, during the day, well, about 6 p.m., but it's, it gets so difficult. Um, our, our life has been just crazy, crazy, crazy. We are in the process of looking for a new home. Um, we're thinking about downsizing, but the amazing thing about thinking about downsizing is you have to really be willing to downsize. And so um, I don't think that the Reed family is ready to downsize yet. I'm just going to say that right now because um, we're, I'm not ready <laughs> to downsize my craft stuff. My husband's not ready to downsize his area and we are having a really hard time in this market. Um, trying to find 
a house that's right for us. So I don't know. I don't know if we'll be moving because we just cannot seem to find what we're looking for. So if anybody else is out there house hunting right now, oh, I am thinking about you because it is tough, 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 tough. It's super tough right now. And the prices in real estate is just ridiculous. We had an amazing offer on our house. Um, somebody wanted to purchase our house, but yeah, I just, I can't find anything comparable. Even, even with thinking about downsizing, we can't find anything comparable. And it's so frustrating. We've put an offer in on three homes. And I will tell you, we've put offers in over asking price, quite a bit over asking price. And we have not gotten those homes. I'm like, you know what? I'm just not doing this. All right, so we have four journal insides done. Let me love this one. I might have to cut a few more papers. Either that or we might have to make less journals. We'll see. We will see how it goes. Does anybody have any fun plans this summer? Everybody's so quiet tonight. Either I'm putting you to sleep or you're just kind of <laughs> listening to me go on and on and on and on. I guess I need to not go on this late at night. <laughs> Let's see here. What did I do? What did I do? You're just chilling. I bet. I bet you're tired. Beth, you've worked all weekend. And then to do that sale, it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay. All right. And I think... <laughs> Penny, I get it. The only reason why I'm up is because I took a nap today and that is never a good thing for me because then I can't sleep. And then, as my husband says, I keep the entire house up. My goodness, I can't pick these papers up. these out because I don't think I have enough. One, two, four, five. Yep, I do not have enough. So I'm going to pull one of these out. Oh, this is such a this one. Put this in here. Okay, so now I have my signatures. And they're going to need to be trimmed because I don't want them to stick out. So we're just going to do simple, 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 simple little signatures. All right. So what I'm going to do is take my paper cutter. And normally, if I'm not live, I do have a um, 
what are those called? Guillotine. Um, paper cutters. I'm looking for my big paper clip here. All right. So I'm going to just take this and I'm lining up. I know it's hard for you to see, but I'm, I'm just going to take a smidge off of here so that I know it's going to fit inside my journal. Oh, how wonderful, Penny. Oh, I can't wait to see the pictures. That is awesome that he's getting married in your yard. Oh, what an amazing memory. I love that. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just lining up. And I know it's probably, probably like, how are you doing this? So remember that these, all, these pages were all the same. So I'm taking a 16th off of each side of that paper that I have lined up, 16th of an inch off of there. And so I know when I fold these signatures and put them inside, they should, they should fit. But I didn't get this one because I was looking at Penny's thing and <laughs> not paying attention. All right. So I need to trim this a little bit. So you could trim these a little bit different. I mean, I know I'm probably doing more work for myself, but, you know, leave it to Rachel. That's how we do things. All right. So there is our first little journal. So there's one. And then what I do is just take a paper clip and I paper clip that journal together. And hopefully, I didn't pay attention, but hopefully I didn't use the same scrap of paper. I did not. Oh, it's not Penny's fault. It's my fault for Gabbit. <laughs> I don't want to blame it on Penny. <laughs> All right. So for this one, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. <laughs> and I'm just going to pop it in here. And I'm going to just fold it, make sure we're good. I'm looking at my paper right here. Whoops. Darn it. Stay right there. All right. And I notice I'm seeing this edge right here. That's where I'm going to take a 16th off. So I'm just going to get my pages together. Use my big monster paper clip. And you could... Um, some people, they will go ahead and they'll bind their journal and then do that. I am not successful in doing that. I usually end up cutting the cover and having other issues. So I just do it like this. Like I said, I know there's another way to do it. I know there's an easier way. All of you who are screaming at me watching this, I know, I know. But I like to do things the difficult way. All right, we're going to close it. We're going to pop it in our cover. It fits in our cover, which is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a paper clip on it. And so we've been on for 49 minutes. I've done a ton of talking, you guys, but I'm already done putting together journal number two. So, you know, we're going to put together five journals. I thought we were going to do six, but I didn't cut enough pages because I wasn't thinking. Um, but it's fine. We'll do five journals. And, you know, really, you could do these five journals in under an hour. Um, and you could have these. They also, the reason why I like them this size is they're perfect to pop in a regular envelope. Um, they're not too thick. So you usually can send them for one stamp, although I usually end up putting stuff with them. So I usually can't get away with one stamp. But, but even if you can get away with two stamps. Um, these are super fun for Happy Mail. They are fun for um, 
You can do them for stocking stuffers. I love to give them to my nieces and nephews because they love to have craft stuff just like everybody else. And so they think like they're getting something really cool, which it is really cool, but it didn't take a lot of expensive supplies to make them this. And you can make up a little mini ephemera kit to go along with them. And they're just great. Okay, I'm gonna double check because I'm chit-chatting here. Make sure that my inside papers are not the same as my outside papers. Ooh, this one needs just another little smidge of a trim. Those of you who are just popping on, please say hello so we know who's in here. I know it's late night and everybody's probably in their jammies, or at least it's late night here in Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> but I would love to know who's here with me tonight. And I'm just smidging off a little bit more. Because I didn't quite get enough. There we go. All right. So Beth Ann, do you work all week or are you off this week? We're gonna be putting together some more stuff. All right. I always love to see what you all put together because everybody does such different things. I know I have to do some um, sourcing this week. So I will be out and about since I'm off for a week from work. Um, I am going to hit a lot of antique stores, um, some estate sales, some different things. I just finished an auction. I'll be picking up some auction items for our next sale because I'm already thinking about some ideas for our next sale. So excited about that. And I don't know, would anybody be interested in, in me doing a video of shopping in some of the stores? Um, that I go to locally, I would be happy to to do a, a quick video on, you know, how I go about sourcing and finding fun items for my crafting purposes. Okay, I thought you were off during the week. I thought you were. Yeah, I, if, if people are interested in that, let me know. I'd be happy to do a video. Um, it's always kind of fun to see what's in other people's states. One thing I've learned though is when people ask you what you're going to do with stuff, when you're in a antique store, you may not want to tell them. People get really, um, they get a little bit grumpy in the antique stores if they know you're not going to keep it as if. <laughs> All right, we're almost there, you guys. <laughs> That's such a too. I know it's like, oh my gosh, I don't. I'm like, oh, I'm just keeping it for my collection. <laughs> but man, you surely do not want to tell them you're going to tear up an antique book. Holy Mother Mary, do people get completely ticked off about that? Okay, somehow I messed up, girls. What did I do? What did I do? How am I short work? I thought it was going to be short of. Two. Maybe I'm not going to be short one. Oh, I guess this one will just have one less page. Okay, here I go. See, I told you. Chit-chatting. I know, Penny. They shouldn't ask. I agree. <laughs> The problem is, is I'm always honest with people. <laughs> then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I even said that. I'll get in the car and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> note to self, don't tell people. But it's like, well, they asked. My husband, he's like, why do you keep doing that? I'm like, well, because they asked and I have to tell the truth. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I have a bunch of antique, vintage, not antique. Um, um, children's books that are just falling apart 
And I really, I'm probably going to do some junk journals out of them. I just love them, but they're just, they need to be repurposed. And um, I know that's a, like a complete no-no. People would be like, don't put them up. Yeah, well, it doesn't do any good if you can't, oops, if, if, if they're falling apart and you can't enjoy them, why not enjoy them in a different way? Sometimes I'll frame some of the pages too because then people can enjoy them that way, but I don't know. Once we buy it, it's ours, right? It's like my husband says, it's just like the casino. Um, and we don't go to the casino very often, but he says, once you get up from your machine, don't look back. Well, that's how it is with selling items. And when I used to do quilts and I would give them to people. Oh, that's a good, I like that, Beth Ann. I'm going to use that. Um, they, um, oh, you guys, somehow I did end up with six. I guess in my talking, I didn't, whatever, but I have six. We did do six journals in less than an hour. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Sorry. I like that, Beth. I might use that line. Oh, thanks, Penny, for stopping in. I appreciate it. I know 5 a.m. does come very early. So you have a wonderful night and um, have a great week, Penny. And um, we will see you soon. <laughs> it's not copyrighted. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to steal anything that's copyrighted. If it's yours, if it's your words, I don't want to use them. <laughs> uh, all right, almost done here. You guys, I totally could, could have whipped these out faster if I wasn't chit-chatting the whole time here. Penny, if she sues me, you now know. You heard her. She said it was not copyrighted. <laughs> she can't, so she can't sue me for copyright infringement. <laughs> oh, goodness. Good times, good times. All right. My lighting is all messed up tonight. I don't understand why. It's, I think it's because of my... She says, I'll share. Thanks, Beth. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. And I'm as cricket as can be because I'm. All right. There we go. That's why normally when I do tutorial videos, you guys, I cut the stuff ahead of time because I can't watch the screen, talk, and craft at the same time. I'm not a good, like, multi multitasker <laughs> okay I can multitask but I can't multi multitask all right so here we are okay so here are my six journals and you can pamphlet stitch them. But the other thing I like to do, if you guys have a long arm stapler, and I did not have one for a really long time, um, and I finally invested in one, and I love it for these little projects like this. And sometimes I will also run these through my sewing machine, um, but you can line these up. And the thing is, is there's a stopper on them. If you buy a newer one, now you can find these at a, like rummage sales and stuff. But I finally just bit the bullet and bought one. Um, you can line it up. So if you're doing multiple ones, and I'm sorry, I've got to look and make sure it's in the right spot here. Um, you can just, it'll already be set up for you. 
I make these a lot. Just gonna do, um, and I go to the middle first. When I'm doing at Christmas time, I make these journals with cards. And what I did is I just poked, I know you can't see that, but I just poked a hole to see if it's gonna be in the right spot, and it is. So then I just do one in the middle. I do one about three quarters of an inch from the top and one three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And so if you make a lot of these mini journals or the, the card journals, I do have lots of tutorials on my channel. I love to take greeting cards and make journals because they fit in the envelopes. And then I'm just using my bone folder. And there is our little journal all done. And then you can just decorate the fronts of them. You can do whatever you want, but they're super fun. So if you don't have one of these, put it on your wish list. Um, I didn't have one for a really, really long time. I think I've, I've had it maybe, maybe, I don't think I've had it a year yet. Um, they're they're kind of pricey. They're like twenty six dollars if you get them on Amazon. But if you want a gift from someone, and if you're like me and you have everything, and people are always asking you what they can buy you, this is something that they could buy you. Because I actually use it way more than I thought I would use it. Oh, the staple didn't. It's got a little bit of a, got a little bit of a kitty wampus. So we're just going to pull that out and we'll put a new one in there. There. And then I just, see, they're, they're a little thick. I mean, I made them kind of thick, but I wanted them to feel like they were, you know, if someone was getting them, they felt a little bit hardy. You could use a few less pages, but all I do is I will set these under old, um, some heavy books overnight before I decorate them. And they'll be perfectly fine. Now, I think what I'm going to do, um, I haven't, oh, darn it, Rachel. Pay attention here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one so that people at the shop can see them. And then I'm going to kit them up with, I have a bunch of glue sticks um, from a project that I was doing. Um, and I think I'm going to kit some up with some little pieces so they can decorate their own journals and make their own little their own little junk journal. So I'll make some pockets and punch out some tags. We're going to make some pockets out of that extra paper. But you guys, this is just an easy way to use up what you have in your stash. I mean, and these are super fun to send to someone who you know would appreciate it. These are great teacher's gifts. Um, these are great to give people and to put a picture in the front of it for them. And this one I need to trim because I wasn't paying attention. That's fine. I can do that. Um, so I would like, if I was going to give this to someone, let's say I'm going to give this to a, my child's teacher. Now my child is way too old, but I used to do things like this. I might take a picture of my child with his or her teacher and put it on the front page so that the teacher can remember where um, he or she got it from. And if, of course, if it's a male teacher, you're going to want to do it in some more masculine paper than what I'm using, but there we are. We are an hour and four minutes, all my gabbing, and we, this is just, oops, 
I am just finished stapling the sixth journal. Okay, so here they are, all six of them that we had been working on. And then here's where you can, and then this is all of the paper that we had left. So what I will usually do is come in here and I will measure Um, so these are about four inches. And so these are 12 inches. So I should be able to get three pockets. If I did my math correctly, I should be able to get three pockets out of here. And a one. We're making three by four cards. And these pockets should fit right inside. Look at. And so all I'm going to do, I'm going to get my corner rounder. And you don't have to do this part. Maybe I'm going to get my corner rounder. Where'd my corner rounder go? Oh, goodness gracious. My office is such a mess right now. That is what I'm going to do tomorrow, is clean this junk up. Because I... Where is my corner rounder? Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to get a different one. Okay, that is so weird, you guys, because I just had that. Anybody else search for tools in their area? And mine is not like it's a small corner chopper. Hmm. Only thing I can think of is my daughter's been crafting, so I'm wondering if she borrowed it. Oh, here it is. Oh, good cripes. Here it is, right here in front of me. Oh, my goodness. Rachel, you're not. Okay. So then I'm going to stack all three. And I want to use the... Oh, I have a hard time with this thing. Yep, I'm with the quarter-inch one. So I'm just going to do... And there we go, we have pockets already made for these. So there's three. So we have six journals and I think what we'll do, let's see, we'll need four pockets per journal if the person wants the pockets. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, I need eight of these to be pockets. We'll leave that on. Okay. So we're going to quickly, quickly, quickly cut our pockets. I'm going to cut, i try to cut three at a time, but I don't know if this paper cutter will do that. Oh, yeah. I'll get these pockets going. And then each one will get four different pockets. And then we could even So then I just stack these up. And I use my corner chomper by We Are Memory Keepers. And I just corner punch them all at one time. 
and okay. I know. See, Bethan, I hate that. <laughs> it's it's definitely with these. Whenever I do a sale, um, my office just gets to be a complete and utter disaster. So it's time for some cleaning tomorrow. I have to go to the dentist in the morning and then cleaning. Just make sure if your paper is um, directional that you are punching your pockets on the right, the right way. The rest of my paper is not directional, so we're good. All right. So here we go. This is how I do it. So we're going to do, we'll keep it in frame. But usually I'll take this over to the other side of my craft room and I will lay them out in a straight line and then I just assembly line them. We'll skip that one because that's the same color as the cover. And we just add these cutie patootie pockets to all of them. And I'm just trying to make sure I get a flower in each one. There we go. So we now have four pockets for each of them. So that takes care of that. And then I'll just stack them on top of each other. All right. There we go. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is this it's hard for you to tell but this is like a pink ombre um and i'm gonna just go ahead and we're gonna cut some real quick tags out of this um i have this tag punch it's a little tiny tag punch but So I'm using up every bit of scrap that we had. And then all I do is I just stack these tags up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I stack those up. I have a We, we Are Memory Keepers um, hole punch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use the um, the eighth inch side, and I can punch all these at one time, which is wonderful. And so now we have those, and this is all I have left from all of that paper that we used, you guys. This is it. So I used all of those sheets of paper. This is it. This is all that's left. And the next thing I have are these paper scraps right here, which were left over from the book pages. And so those can make cute tags as well. So you can go ahead and just, and, and if you don't have a punch like this, you can actually cut them. Um, and I will cut some too, because I want some to be a little bit bigger here. Oh, 
goodness, now I'm going to be like fumble fingers and not be able to get this in here. There we go. So I'm cutting four tags at a time because I'm stacking my papers up. So quick and easy, easy peasy, using up every bit of scrap that I can. We'll go ahead and stack those babies up. I'm going to do the same thing, punch them. So we have a stack of tags here. These fun little things, um, we're going to do quick little booklets for these. So let's see, one, two, three, four. So these are two and a half. five, six, okay, and we're going to make some little flips, so, and I'm just cutting these in half, um, roughly. They're not exactly in half, but it's okay. Because we're just going to make these little matchbook pieces. And you guys, I'm using everything that's on my desk. Everything that I possibly can on my desk. Oops. Other than making a mess here. Let's try this again. There we go. All right, let's. Almost done. Now you guys are like, oh my gosh, she's never going to end. Okay. So remember, I have all these pieces here. This is all that's left. So we're just going to grab a few of these. We're going to make a little one, two, three, four. Make a little 16 page matchbook here. And that's how simple you can make ephemera and things to put in these quick little journals. We're at an hour and 17 minutes. But I just made enough for six friends, you guys. So just like that, this time I'm going to take my half inch rounder. And now we have this cute little flip book. And I'm going to go ahead and go on the inside and I'm going to do these. Whoops, should have held them a little bit better. And now I have this little flip notebook that can be pulled out. How super fun is that? Two, three, four. I always use my off cuts for these little tuck-ins because they're fun. And the thing I like about these tuck-ins is I tell people all the time that buy my journals, um, you know, this is a great place for you to take some little notes to bring back to your journal. So a lot of times if you don't want to take your whole journal, you know, you can just take this little, little field note pack and... That's super fun. Super duper fun.
how many of you make these little field note booklets or these little match but they're not really match book because I didn't flip up the end but I just call them little field note booklets or if you fold at the end it can be a match book you can go the other way and those are fun too but sometimes they get bulky these are easy to just slide into a tuck and when you have something like this it's fun to just put a stamp right here the edge of the book page it doesn't have a lot I will just take and put a stamp there um, or you can if you have a sewing machine you can just um, zigzag down there and just leave it and that's it I mean it doesn't have to be really fancy it does not have to be fancy at all All right, let's see if we have six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I need to do one more. Perfect. And I want to use this one because I love this ruler on top. My fingers to work today. There we go. So we have these six little booklets. And this is what I have left. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to cut some taller tags. So all I'm going to do is cut the top off just like this. I'm going to cut my edge. I'm going to take one of my triangles and I'm going to line it up over here. I carefully hold it. This is always fun for me because. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to grab, and this time I'm going to use my half inch. Nope. I'm going to use my 3 16 inch punch. I'm going to punch it in the middle. And all I have left are these little mini booklets. So I will just do, I can do two more. And I'll just keep these for my purse. And we're done. We've used everything. Everything that was on the desk. Oh, come on. Come on. And this one I'm just going to staple this way. So it's just going to be a flip up like that. And we are done. We've used everything. Oh, I fibbed. There's one more sheet of paper right here. So here's my scraps, you guys. Here's my scraps. And I I mean, I could cut something out of that, but I'm not going to. This is it. Out of all those book pages, all those scrapbook pages, I do have these. These are strips that I will probably... <coughs> excuse me, run through my sewing machine and make some ruffles. Um, I did have this sheet up, so I fibbed. But I could, uh, we can make, make another couple more tags. You can always use tags. I always use tags for bases of things and stuff like that. So tags are a, are a staple in our world, right? Okay, that's it. That's all we have left. We did everything. Now, if you don't have a sewing machine, I'm going to show you one more thing real quick. It's at right an hour and 20 minutes, and I'm going to promise I'm going to get off of here. But when I talk about ruffles, you can take these and literally just ruffle them up like this. And you're just bending the page. 
it's kind of like a Z fold. Just like that. Now, if you do not have a sewing machine, you can take another strip of paper and I just use Fabri-Tac. Or you can use a glue stick. I use Fabri-Tac because it's quick adhering. And you just put this on the back like this. And these little ruffles are done. So let's do one with some word on it. All right, so I'm just going to. And then what I do is I just put them underneath a book to dry flat. I mean, you can, this is something you can do in front of the TV. And you just glue these babies down. Easy peasy. Using up every bit, every bit of scraps that we had to make these six journals, you guys. And this one's wonky, but I'm okay with that. The other thing you can do is you can, and then I ink these up. They look so much better when you ink them up. We'll let those dry a little bit. Um, but you can also take, if you have a needle and thread, and you can just do um, a quick little running stitch. But I mean, look at how cute. You can take this little ruffle and put it on your book. Isn't that adorable? And then I'll show you if I have, I don't know if I have any colored thread. Um, let's see here, I might have some in here. Let me show you really quick how to, well, you could even do something like this. So I have this purple, I don't, this is some purple yarn. Let's see if I can find a needle in my disaster here. Oh, this is pretty thick. I'm not sure if I can get it threaded, but let me give it a try. Okay, let's, I'll show you my little trick. I don't know if it'll work with this or not because it's pretty thick yarn. But if you're having trouble threading, if you take a piece, you can do wire or this is just a piece of the waxed linen. So I'm gonna hook that on there like that. And you make a loop. And then if you feed through, And then you have to kind of to be patient. Oops. I don't know. This might not go through the eye of this needle because it's pretty thick yarn. Come on. If I get it through, we're good here. Come to the edge a little bit where it's. Come on. Come on, people. Just one second here so I can see it, you guys. Oh, goodness. Come on. Why do you have to be so difficult while I'm uh, while I'm taping? Hmm. I don't know. I don't. Maybe the eye of the snail's not. Let's see if I can find a bigger eye. Oh. 
this is what happens when I do impromptu with you guys. Here's a really big one, but man, that's going to leave big holes. Well, let's try this one. I don't know what's going to happen. Don't know what's going to happen, but heck, we'll give it a try, right? This is a this is a tapestry needle. Whoops. So it's going to leave some serious holes, but there we go. Hey, it went through. Okay, let's see what happens. I don't know if this is going to work or not, you guys. So all I'm doing is just a straight stitch and you can use regular thread. You don't have to use yarn. I just thought it kind of goes with what we have going on here. All right, so now all I have to do is just trim this and I can fray it like the other end if I want. And you now have this cute little whimsical ruffle. And you could take, and we can ink it up. What do you guys think? We can put that on any page and it's done. So just simple like that. So even if you don't have a sewing machine, you can do it by hand. I use yarn, look at this is yarn. I left some tails, you wouldn't have to leave tails. You could cut those off. It would give a totally different look if it was just like this. You know, you could do anything. And, and look at how cute that would be just hanging out of your journal. Super cute, super, super cute. So, I challenge you to play with some scraps this week. Make some of these scrappy journals. Hang on to them. Get Think about who might enjoy them or, you know, put them with. Sometimes I'll put these as freebies with people who purchase from my shop. Um, sometimes I like to just share them with others. Super cute. Happy mail. Just think about, you know, who might really enjoy something fun like that and give it a try have a fun time with doing it you know don't don't stress about it just do it just do it all right well hey I since everybody is so quiet and nobody's chatting I think I've put everybody to sleep they've fallen asleep with their YouTube open tonight <laughs> I think, I think I will. Oh, thanks, Beth, that you didn't fall asleep. Well, I can't wait to see what you make. So please, if you guys make something, send it to me. I'd love to see what you make. But let's get those scraps out. Let's start using them. And let's use every bit of them. Let's not leave any of these scraps to put in our, in our, our um, scraps. Because I don't know about you, but I sometimes it's like, I'll make a journal and I have more scraps than I started with. I have more paper than I started with is what I feel like. So use up every bit of it. Be creative in using them up. 
um, think about, you know, how you might want to do that. Another quick idea, I'll just show you real quick, and then I am going to let you guys go, is you can do weaving with these. And so if you've not woven with your scraps yet, um, but I do like to use a glue stick for this because it can get pretty disastrous. So, oops, right on my table. All right. So what I do is you want it to overhang. Let them overhang a little bit here. Oh, Rachel, you shouldn't have done that. Okay, so we're not going to overhang this first one because I put glue on it. Goodness gracious. Way to go, Rachel. All right. And then we're just going to put a little glue on here and a little bit of glue on here. This is always fun too. And then, so now we're gonna do under, so we did over, under, over. Now we're gonna do under, over, under. And I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue. And we're gonna straighten that up just like that. So here's another quick idea. Now we're going to go over, under, over. And I'm going to get my glue on there. Making sure these are nice and tight. Now I'll put my glue on this one. And we're going to go under, over, under. Just like that. And now over, under, over. Now you can do a whole page of these if you want. I'm just doing a little piece for you. And it's fun if you have different colored um, book pages. A lot of times I'll do this with um, like boxing and, and that because it's just fun. Okay, so usually what I will do is I always have usually just scrap other scrap paper hanging around. Um, usually it's around my desk and I don't have any right this second, I don't think. Um, actually I do, I fibbed. I had these pieces from making some, um, I was making, um, cards for my vintage brooches for packaging. So these are just some pieces of cardstock and hot dog, they are just the right size. Oh my goodness, couldn't do that again if I wanted to. All right, let's do one more, let's do this one. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, is I think I can glue one more on here, sure can. I'm gonna glue one more, just like this. All right, and now we have two really fun, journaling cards that are woven. And all I have to do is trim around them. And we have these really cute cards. And then I like to take them and I just corner around all four corners. But these could be pockets too, you guys. Look at it. So it'd be super cute pockets. And there's some quick and easy journal cards out of scraps as well. 
And then you could take a big stamp. And since I'm very, and then just kind of go around and make sure that these are glued down your corners and your edges. I just kind of lift them up to make sure we're not going to have any problems. And if you have a sewing machine, you could sew around these real quick too. Just want to make sure they're not going to peel up. And then I have an idea for this one. Since it's mostly just cream and white. Um, I have this fun butterfly stamp that I believe will be perfect on there. And so we're going to use that since my theme is kind of cottage chic. And then I think we will call it a night. So I hope you enjoyed this little craft with me. I'm terrible at stamping, guys. So, so there's a quick and easy journal card. I think it's time for a new Mementos ink pad. Oh, look, and there I go, putting it on. See, I told you, this is not my thing. All right, so what we're going to do, well, it's fine. We're going to leave it just like that. See, that one stamped much better. It was much juicier. And this one will just have to put something in the corner to cover that up. All right. I hope everybody has a great day. Leave it. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. There we go. See, and those are just super easy cards. You can write on the back of them. You can make them as pockets. So leave up those strips. You guys, we did a lot in an hour and 42 minutes. I did a lot of talking, but I'm going to go ahead and get off right now. But I'm going to do some, I really liked those woven um, cards. So I think I'm definitely going to make six of those so that at least you can have at least one of, of each of each of the journals can have at least one of those little woven cards. And I hope everybody has an amazing week. I hope you use up your scraps. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thanks, Beth, for joining. And thanks, everybody else, for joining. And thank you to all of you who are watching the replay. Bye, everybody.